Good whiskey, fast women, and hot cigars. So we put out the poll. You guys answered. What do you want to see? Well, most of you came back. Well, actually, 37% of you came back saying you want to know how to get better mileage out of an older, older emissioned engine. Stand by. We're going to give you a couple pointers. <laughs> so you know the videos on pre-emission and how to get better mileage out of a pre-emission motor. So what have I got? Him. That's Alex. Hello. That is the shop manager and probably one of the smartest guys in the business. So I'm just throwing quick questions at Alex. Okay, now whether Alex wants to answer them or not, that's entirely up to Alex. But I would love to sit here and say, you know what, I know a lot about it pre-emission motors. I really don't. I've had a couple, I've had them work for me, and I've done okay. But how do we get more fuel economy out of a pre-emission motor? Well, over the last year now, we've been pushing the new. The new Detroit, the DD15s, the new X15 Cummins, the new Packard motor. You know, I say Packard, not Packard. Packard motor. P A C C A R. Packard. We've been pushing that, and, and, and those motors have been performing. But a lot of you guys want to hang on to the old motors, but you still want to get some, some fuel mileage out of them. Well, we're going to try to help you out a little bit with a couple of just a small things. The first thing that pops off the top of my head, if you've got a pre-emission motor, is obviously you got to keep the motor healthy, okay? So uh, I know that with, with when I had the, the Kenworth, the 60 series Detroit, um, you've got to keep a clean air filter. Your air filter has to be clean. You cannot go and change those yearly. Um, I, was, I, I was changing those things uh, on, on all pre-emission motors. I was changing them at least every six months. Um, they want clean air. That will help you with your fuel mileage. Valve lash. Valve lash. Aerodynamic. Well, fuel filters. Oh, it's combinations of things. Right. We've got clean fuel filters as a must. Clean air filters is a must. Get your top set done on a regular basis. With the new ones, with the new emission motors, with the new ones, say for example, like the Freightliners, you don't need to have your valve uh, your valve lash done every year. Okay, they're, so, uh, I know that, that Detroit, Volvo, I think even Cummins, they're saying, you know, was it 400,000? It's 400,000 now to do those. On the 60 series Detroit, the N14 Cummins, um, the Cats, the C15 Cat, um, those ones there, I would recommend you do those yearly or at least every, every 16 months, say a year and a half, do your valve lash or your top set and get those done. Now. There are some aftermarket ways of doing this. There are companies out there that make aftermarket parts that will help you with fuel mileage if you're willing to spend the money. I had a W900. First of all, it's like pushing a brick through the air, right? There's no aerodynamics to it. Very un-aerodynamic. There was no skirts on it, so I had air flowing up and around underneath the truck. That's important. If the new trucks, we've all got, most of us have skirts on our trucks and they're more aerodynamic. Our trailers are also more aerodynamic as well. Most of them are coming with skirts. But a very important thing, especially with van drivers, with flatbedders, we have a little more, it's a more of a problem because we can't bring the trailer up as close because we've all got uh, headache racks or cabinets or whatnot. But if you're a van driver, you got a reefer, you got a heater, you can close that gap. Get that gap closed up as cl as much as you possibly can, you know. And, and the only way to do it is you unlock your fifth wheel, you move it up a notch, you go make a turn. You got more room, move it up again. You keep doing that until you've got about that much clearance when you're making your turns on both sides. Get that gap, get that air out of there. That's the wor one of the worst things in the world because the air comes right up over the top of your truck, and the first thing it does is it goes up over and straight down. And what is that doing? It's putting resistance against the front of that trailer and that's costing you money. So that's that's a free one, that one's easy. Back to Alex. The, the right measurement in the truck and the trailer. And it's gonna give you, people say 1% less in the fuel mileage. Okay, so this information, is, I've just been informed by a really smart guy. Thank you. Thanks Alex that Alex has just let me know that you can actually go online. I didn't know that there, there is actually somewhere online that you can go and somebody's already done the math for you and it's broken down into centimeters. Now, I don't know what a centimeter is. I do everything in inches and feet. So 
If you're uh, obviously a Canadian, you're in centimeters. If you're in the, uh, an American, you're in inches. But um, I've just been told it's in centimeters. They break it down into centimeters. How many centimeters from the back of your trailer or from the back of your truck to the front of your trailer is ideal and how, what resistance and what that'll take away and what that'll give you in mile per gallon. Uh, Alex says it's about half a mile. It can make up to about a half a mile per gallon. I don't know about you, but if you take a half a mile per gallon and you run that, say over, I run 3,000, 3,200 miles, 3, yeah, 3,200 miles a week, you add that up over a week, you add that up over a month, you add that up over a year, that half a mile per gallon, you're not talking about a couple hundred bucks here, folks, you're talking about a couple thousand dollars. So I know that has nothing to do with the pre-emission motor, but we're throwing this all in here just to give you guys, give you guys a break. Once again, Ronan's phoning, and what's he telling me? Guess what? 21% of you guys are subscribed. The other, what, 79% of you are watching and not subscribing? Subscribe. Back to the video. Unfortunately, with pre-emission motors, there's not a whole lot you can do to it. Like I touched on earlier, there's a couple of companies out there that do make aftermarket parts. Now, what these parts are supposed to do, I never used one, I don't know if they work. I'm gonna assume that I'm gonna say something here, and if it's wrong, you guys are gonna lambaste me in the comments like you usually do. But I know that the, some of these products, for example, there are aftermarket uh, manifolds, intake manifolds, exhaust manifolds, and they do certain things and, and, the, and the materials that they're made out of for the, for the older motors do increase mile per gallon and will help you. Turbos, you know, you don't have to stick to just a standard turbo. You can get bigger turbos. Differential. Differential? So as you can see, I've got information flying at me all over the bloody place here. But let's get back to the, the, the aftermarket parts. That are, like I said, there are aftermarket parts for your manifolds, there's aftermarket parts for your turbos. There's probably an aftermarket part for just about everything on a pre-emission truck. Whether they work or not, I don't know. I can't say because I've never used it. If you have, if you've got any of the exhaust manifold or, or the intake manifold, they're made of ceramic now. I've never even heard of that, but somebody told me that. So if you've got something like that and it's working and it's increasing your mile per gallon, chirp in in the comments. We wanna hear about it. We wanna know what you were doing before and what you're doing now, if it made a difference. Like I said before, pre-emission motors thrive on clean air. Always make sure you've got a clean air filter. They thrive on clean, uh, clean fuel. Uh, make sure your fuel filter is clean, okay? Not necessarily to do with the pre-emission motor, but since we're bouncing all over the place in this video, why the hell not? I've said this before, and I'm gonna say it again, make sure your truck is geared properly for what you're doing. Make sure you've got the right gear ratio, the differentials in your truck. Make sure you're geared properly. If you're not geared properly, for example, you've got 411 gears in your truck and you're, running, you're expecting to be running through Montana, Utah, Arizona at 80 miles an hour, your RPMs are gonna be at about 2200 and you're gonna smoke your motor, burn your oil and leave yourself on the side of the road. Make sure you're geared properly. So there, that one's a, a kind of, a, a, I've been chirping on for years about, but like I said, we're bouncing all over the place. We might as well throw it in there. So in the last video, when we, when we, when I told you is that I bought a truck. I bought a truck. There's a couple of comments in there of guys saying, oh, you're gonna miss that old Kenworth and oh, you're gonna regret buying the new truck and the new technology. And then it's funny, I read those comments and I didn't make a comment back. I had to keep my mouth shut and bite my tongue. And then it's funny, a buddy of mine, Dave, he calls me today and we're just talking, shooting the breeze. And he says to me, he says, do you miss the Kenworth? And I had to sit there and think, you know what? I had a lot of complaints about the Kenworth. You know, the seat, this, that, whatever. I could have spent the thousands of dollars and fixed the seat. And I could have spent the thousands of dollars and fixed, fixed a couple of the things that I didn't like. I chose not to and go the direction that I went. I went in and did the challenge and then I, I bought a truck. Um, but do I miss that Kenworth? Yes. Do I miss driving it? Yes. Do I miss the sound of that pre-emission 60 series Detroit motor? Yes. Do I, love, do I miss that growl or do I miss the bark? Every one of you knows what I mean when I say that bark. When you take your foot off that gas, off that accelerator, and you hear those jakes kick in, that bark. Do I miss that? Oh, hell yes. But do I regret doing what I've done? No, absolutely not. 
The last video I said, and I mean this, and I truly mean this, I am in this to make money, to make as much money as I can. It's a three-year commitment. I'm here to make as much money in the shortest amount of time. I had to think about that, didn't I? <laughs> I'm here to make as much money in the shortest amount of time that's not gonna cost me a fortune. I don't wanna be nickeled and dimed. I don't want big expenses. I took the truck I took to do the job I'm doing, to get where I wanna go, so I can bow out gracefully and get the hell out of this business. So, there you have it. That's what I got on pre-emission motors. If anything there helped you, great. If it didn't, keep looking. There's a lot of guys around in this business that know a hell of a lot more than I do. Don't forget to hit the subscription button. Turn on your notifications, give us a thumbs up. We'll see you down the road.